Whether you're a first time home buyer trying to figure out how to do home repair and home improvement, or if you're someone who's been doing it for a long time, you need to make sure you have the proper tools to get the job done right. In this video, I'm gonna share with you my top five-ish tools that you should have in your arsenal at home. Let's get right to it. Number five, I call this the basics. There's a handful of items that you just have to make sure you have around the house at all times. First, get yourself a really good set of screwdrivers. Make sure you have a couple of different sizes of Phillips and flathead screwdrivers. And you can also get these all-in-one screwdrivers. They come with four different sizes, well, two, for flathead, two for Phillips, that you can use all in one. Saves a lot of space in your toolbox. Additionally, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you get a set of Torx screwdrivers. Not everyone thinks of buying these guys, but when you start to deal with appliance repair and other things of the sort, you are going to need these babies. Make sure you also have a good hammer. Just get a basic finishing hammer that has the curved back on it, the curved claw. This will get the job done nine times out of 10. You also need a good tape measure. I love these fast cap tape measures because I can write on the outside and erase measurements so I don't forget them, which I do all the time. But they have various different sizes, different setups of the actual tape measure itself where you can get measurements on both sides. Lots of varieties you could choose from. Wrenches are massively important. You wanna make sure you have a good set. I like the ones that have the built-in ratchet on the end so you can it's almost like, that wasn't a very good demo. It's like having a socket set without a socket set. Get the ones with the ratcheting wrench in the end. But if you wanna save yourself a little bit of room in your toolbox again, just get an adjustable wrench. These things will fit around anything as long as it's wide enough, obviously. <laughs> Pliers are also massively important. You just need a basic set. You don't have to go crazy with channel locks or other types. Just starting out, basic pliers. It's also important to have a good workbench that you can store when you're not using it, especially if you don't have a dedicated workspace in your home. And I'm a big fan of the Bora Centipede workbench. I love it to death. They come in various sizes and you can really choose whichever one is gonna be best for you. Number four, get yourself a solid stud finder. I cannot stress the importance of this enough. The last thing you wanna do is put a screw or a nail through a pipe or an electrical line in your house. Get a Wallabot. I cannot say enough about these things. They are the best stud finders I've ever used in my life. And you get a visualization right on your mobile phone. Honestly, how much easier can it get? Number three, get yourself a circular saw. It does not have to be something crazy expensive. I've used this Porter cable saw for a long time. I've beaten it up pretty good. I'm actually due for a new saw. But save yourself a little bit of cash. Get the corded saw. You don't have to worry about going cordless. But if you're going to go cordless, you want to get something that you can use the battery on across all of your tools. Number two, get yourself a solid sander. And I know you might be thinking just use sandpaper with your hand, but when you get into bigger jobs, having an electric sander is going to make a massive difference. Get a random orbit sander like this DeWalt. I love this sander. You can get attachments for it so you can hook it up to your shop back so you don't generate a lot of dust in the house. And then you can also buy the discs that have various different grit sandpaper on them. This will make a massive difference with any refinishing or finishing work that you're going to do. And the tool that you're gonna use the most, which is why I rank it number one on my list of important tools, is going to be your drill. Get a solid drill. I highly recommend getting something that's brushless. The, the difference there is brushless motors have less friction in them. They're a little bit more battery and energy efficient. When you get your drill, just like I said for the circular saw, make sure that you pick something that you can use across all of your tools. Now, if you're like me, you also may want to buy the lesser expensive drill for a very specific reason, which is why I have this guy. I actually use this little 12 volt DeWalt all the time for little jobs around the house. But the bigger reason, the bigger reason that I do this is so that other people in the house who need to use a drill don't use my really nice drill. Don't tell them I said this. 
And if you're not sure what all these different settings and twisty knobs and everything are on your drill, check out this video. And until the next time, keep doing it yourself.